Are there any steel workers in the house? All right. Well, first of all, I want to thank Sharpa for that overly kind and generous introduction. Thank you, Sharpa, for everything that you do. I want to thank our director, Mike Bilsap, for his leadership, his commitment, and for making a difference. Thank you, Mike. Let's hear it for our director. And we in the labor movement are privileged to have a leader who's committed every day to working people throughout this country. Let's give a round of applause to Rich Trumka. And we are so proud that one of our own is leading the labor movement here in Indiana, our state president, Brett Voorhees. Thank you, Brett. I want to just take a moment to recognize our members who came here from Carrier, UTC, in Memphis, Tennessee, to be part of this struggle, led by their president, Vincent Dean. Our brothers and sisters from Memphis, raise your hand, and let's thank them for being here. Look, the United Steel Workers Union have represented workers at Carrier Technologies here in Indianapolis since the 1950s. And throughout those years, our members, common, decent people, they went to work every day with a common goal in mind. They committed to make the very best residential and commercial gas furnaces anywhere in the world. And they lived up to their commitment for years. And this company has been extremely profitable, including today, because of the work that our members do every day. And in return, all that our members want is to share in the wealth that for years they've helped to create. They've had no, they, 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 they didn't go to Carrier with no illusions of becoming rich. They merely wanted to be able to be good citizens, pay their taxes, educate their children, maintain affordable health care, to buy a home, and one day retire with the dignity and respect that they deserve. See? It's called shared prosperity. And that's the vision of all workers in this labor movement. That if you work hard and play by the rules, you and your family will be OK. And then on February the 10th of this year, our 1,400 members at Carrier, whose parent company is United Technologies, they was presented with another vision of America. It is a vision of America born out of a neoliberal position that says corporations are people and people. That's right. And in their vision of America, people are merely things. You know, I can't imagine what went through the minds of those 1,400 workers who had created the carrier success story that morning in that break room. Thanks to cell phones, the world was able to witness, and many expressed amazement that carrier could blatantly take on this action. And many have responded. You know, I want to thank Representative Mesa sin sincerely for her support and for our commitment to stand with us. But see, we've also heard from some state representatives and senators who said that they are amazed at what Carrier did to our members, yet they voted for right to work in 2012. You know, you know to say that you support Carrier workers, 
and then you vote to turn the great state of Indiana into a right-to-work state. That's lewd. That's immoral. That's the height of hypocrisy. We don't want, we don't want the carrier workers don't want pity. We want you to take action. You know, I read after carrier took this action that the governor said we're going to make sure that we secure retraining dollars. Retraining is a good thing. But the first person that needs to be retrained is your governor. Because let me say, Mike Pence was not a friend of workers when he was in the Congress. He hasn't been a friend of workers in the State House. We need to retrain Mike Pence and elect John Gray as our next governor of the great state of Indiana. As we walk through the halls in Washington, Leo and all of us is approached by Congress people all over the country who've seen the video and they express their concern for the carrier workers. And some of those same Congress people support TPP. And TPP will enable employers across this country to create other carrier situations where we will see our jobs shipped off to the lowest bidder. You cannot support carrier workers and support TPP. We don't want your pity. We want your action. You know, there's even a national candidate, and I'm not going to call his name. He's a master of the five-second soundbite. Every opportunity he gets, he refer to the workers at carry. Yet, he says in the United States, workers make too much and oppose any increase in the minimum wage. I'm not going to call his name, but let me say this. He say he support carrier workers, yet today the steel workers are standing behind Unite here as they try to organize one of his hotels against his resistance in Las Vegas, Nevada. You know, brothers and sisters, this isn't no game. This isn't about a five-second sound bite. We're not looking necessarily for friends. We're looking for warriors who are going to stand with us at the battle line as we define the principles of America and what America means to all of us, to those of us who share our blood and our tears to build the military, to build the roads, to build the bridges, and those of us who believe in the very fiber of what that flag stands for. Stand with us. And I just wish that these employers, sometimes you wonder, when it comes to steel workers, they continue to try to take us on. And I wonder sometimes, why don't they just go talk to somebody before they pick a fight with us? The CEO should have went and talked to Firestone, who, who came after us in 1994 and tried to destroy a union. A union that got with us in one of our greatest mergers, and we kicked Firestone's ass, and we won. They need to go. They need to go talk to somebody. Carrier didn't talk to the executives in the oil industry, who picked the fight with us. They ignored safety and health in oil refineries around this country. At the end, we won because we stood fast because we stood tall and our solidarity could not be broken. You know? Carrier should have talked to Honeywell, a corporation committed to break this union. They tried, they tried, and they lost. Because when the steel workers stand tall, we make a difference. They should have went and talked to ATI, who thought that they could lock out 2,200 of our members 
and get a contract that was insufficient to what our members are worth. At the end, the scabs was out, steel workers went back in. We won because that's what we do as steel workers. We fight, we fight, we fight, and our goal, and our goal, we're not going to be satisfied until the CEO at United Technologies every night is our commitment that before he go to bed, he's going to say them damn steel workers. And every morning, and every morning, the first thing he's going to say when he wake up, I wonder what them damn steel workers going to do today. That's our commitment. This is a fight about what type of America are we going to have. This is a fight about what type of America our children and our grandchildren is going to inherit. This fight is bigger than the 1400s who are unfortunately in this situation. Any of us could have been carried. And if we don't end this fight, if we don't fight until we are the last people standing, then we're going to see many more carriers. So I commit to you that the steel workers is in the middle of this fight. There's a lot of people out here today, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Because we're going to take this company on. They picked the wrong fight with the wrong union, in the wrong place, at the wrong time. Solidarity forever.